So hi everyone, welcome to Humans in AI by the Global AI Community, where we in each episode interview a guest, a human who is working in AI. And this episode we have Ape. Hi Ape. Hey everyone, my name is Abe. I'm a product manager on the Azure Machine Learning team focused on things like MLOps. Welcome. I'm going to ask you a couple of questions about okay. you and what you do. Sweet. And I'm really looking forward to all your answers. Okay, cool. So the first one is, if you would not decide to start working in tech, in yeah. what field would we have find you then? Um, if I could have my way, I think I would probably be playing basketball. Um, I mean, I'm pretty tall. I've been playing basketball like since like high school time. I was supposed to, you know, play in college, but I end up doing software engineering instead. So that's why I'm here. <laughs> you enjoy that more? Um, yes, it's a lot more. I, I don't say I enjoy. I enjoy both equally, mm -hmm. but um, software engineering is just more practical to make more money. <laughs> really? Yeah, that's totally true. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. So, what do you and your team do? What do they focus on? Um, so. What my team focuses on is there's my core team and there's the broader team. So my core team right now, we focus on MLOps and inference. So basically what that means is in Azure Machine Learning, we focus on how we can bring MLOps to all our customers. So how we can get machine learning to production quicker. So how can we speed up people's training to, you know, uh, deployment pipelines a lot faster. And the second side of that, we work on inference. So basically, Inference is how do we get those models deployed and predicted quicker. So that's kind of the core team. And then the bigger team is called AI Platform. So AI Platform is the same team that powers all the cool new things you're seeing in AI right now in terms of like GitHub Copilot, the new Bing, uh, Teams, all these kind of things goes to some other folks on my broader team in AI Platform, like Cognitive Services. So partnerships with open AI and stuff like that. So that's super fun, super exciting to work with. Like every day I wake up and there's something new on the news. Yeah, you're really working on the edge. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I might fall off. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully not. Yeah. <laughs> so how did you get into the field of AI? Um, for me, like, I think maybe like half the people I work with, similar path of like, we interned at Microsoft. So for me, you know, I'm actually uh, grew up in Toronto. Uh, Canada. So I went to school in Canada. And then one of my last few internships was with Microsoft. Mm -hmm. So I started with Microsoft back in 2017 as an intern. And it was just a random team. I didn't purposely say, hey, I want to be an AI. I actually started on the Bing team. And then I was like, oh, what's this AI thing that everyone is really talking about? So I read into it. I read some papers. And I was like, this is super fun. Mm -hmm. um, and I used to work before Azure Machine Learning was a thing, before AI Platform was a team, there was a sub-infrastructure team inside Bing that I worked on. So I've seen Azure AI strategy grow up from like infant years. So it's been fun to see that. So I started at like the ground level, working with the research team and really like up-leveling myself. So that's how I kind of got into it. I've just been interested over time. And I always like data. So when people talk about software engineering, a lot of my friends are like, oh, like you should do video games. I was like, I kind of want to process data and see how I can get insights. And people are like, you're weird. <laughs> I'm like, ah, I don't know. It's like, for me, that was way cooler. Like, how can we take all this data from everywhere and actually give people insights? So like, I'm like most software engineers. I don't want to use the word lazy, but like, we want to optimize. We want to be efficient. So like, I, let's say I'm efficient. So I want to see a bunch of data come in, press two or three buttons, and boom, things happen. And AI is just that. Yeah. So for me, you know, when I started 2017, I just started you know, doing more things. I worked with reinforcement learning. I worked with the first uh, version of our, our Python SDK. And then I worked with notebooks when I first started full time. So for me, that's how I kind of ramped up in the AI space. And I've been loving it ever since. Good to hear. Also a good bridge to the next, the next question. Yeah. What really excites you in AI? Oh, man, right now, like before what it was was like, oh, man, what are the possibilities of AI? Like, you know, how can we help customers scale? It can predict everything. And then just like weird, like um, word of AGI, like just general intelligence. So back in 2018, when I worked on reinforcement learning, the first thing I did is I read like four or five papers about reinforcement learning. And then I developed like a pawn game that beat itself. And I'm like, 
okay, if a game can beat itself, like what can it do in the real world in terms of business, in terms of my day to day? And that's what we're seeing today. So we're seeing like ChatGPT, when I got on it, it's like now it's, you know, open another tab for me or anything with open AI. That's what really excites me. Like what else can we do for people? What else can we do to empower people? Not only in English, but in other places around the world. So like the way I think about it is, you know, I grew up in a bunch of different places. I was actually born in Nigeria. So, you know, different people, especially in Nigeria and Africa, have different native languages. So when you look at AI, how can AI help bridge that gap? So I can I type in something, right, in one language and get the response back and get more knowledge in English or whatever language, and AI is slowly solving all those problems. So when I say AI, I really think like, you know, really what excites me is like seeing something like ChatGPT, it took research of years to get there, and now it's a real conversation to AI, and we're really seeing like, this is where computers can get us, like maybe a new revolution. So it's like, what else can we do with this cool technology? How much faster and more efficient can we be? Not lazy. Um, <laughs> uh, with all this different tech and things like that. So that's really exciting. And the news is moving so quick that like, I've never seen in my lifetime see two giants like Microsoft and like, let's say Google go mm -hmm. head to head in a space, in such a hot space with like a million startups trying to join in. So yeah. every day it's fun to work in. And this is like what tech is about and like, it's like the start of the internet again. I wasn't old enough for that, but now I'm seeing it and it's like, it's super fun to work in. I am old enough for that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what are your predictions then for, for ChatGPT for the next year, uh, for instance? Uh, for me, the prediction of ChatGPT, like we're right now this filming or maybe like in February uh, and like beginning of this year, just in general alone, we've seen a lot come out. From ChatGPT back in like November, October, to like the new Bing, to like the teams. So for me, I can see exponential growth. So the big thing I'm seeing is when I start using ChatGPT, for myself, I'm like, this would be really cool if I can like put it in my personal docs or in something where I can just tell it like, hey, write this thing in my style, right? And it will know my style for all my data. So let's superimpose that to businesses. Mm -hmm. So let's say I'm working in a random business, let's just call it Corp A. So in Corp A, I'm a new employee. I walk in and I'm like, oh, what are all these words people said in the meeting? Not only is the meeting transcribed with AI, the meeting is summarized with AI, and I can tell, take the summary of that meeting and put it into something else and like, pick out each word and be like, explain this to me. And then the AI you know, takes all my company's data and then tells me. So when I talk about efficiency, when I talk about how can we use AI and data, teach different people to learn more like, quicker, that's the kind of thing I'm seeing in the future. So it's like, how can we not only empower these huge enterprises with AI, but how do you empower the small mom and pops? So like, let's say I'm a mom and pop star, or I have like a small business. It's like, how can I take my small business from, you know, just like get into a few customers I don't know, ask the AI like, hey, how can I get ads to like do X, Y, and Z? It'll take all that data, give you a good prediction of what you need to do. Things you have to pay like, you know, a bunch of experts for, um, pay them a bunch of money for. Now you can get good insights. You know who the expert to go to and you know how to optimize yourself. So it really empowers everyone, not only the, the big, big businesses, but small businesses as well. And like people can go in there, make more money for themselves and their family and just like maybe just do more stuff in their life. Be much more efficient. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Efficiency, that's the word. <laughs> Last question. What do you really love about your job? What do I really love about Honestly, like, I was thinking about that this morning, just like when I woke up, it was kind of like, just this. Like, I really trained in like software engineering, but I did a software engineering and business major. So I did both. Mm -hmm. And PM, and the funny thing is like, I actually um, started wanting to be a software engineer, but I randomly stumbled into being a product manager. And for me, I just love the fact that I can be multifaceted. So I love the fact that like this is whatever day I could do an interview, talk to people, let people know about things like MLOps and really like get people excited. Or I can just go super nerdy and like, like geek out on the APIs, the ARM templates and really understand all these things and build out the architecture. Because for me, I really like building out some software architecture, working with people, seeing how we can scale. But then really talking to people and it's like, okay, like, I'm going to explain to you, like, you're a nine-year-old. I can do that or, like, really explain to you, like, you're a PhD person. And we can go back and forth. And that test of, like, my knowledge on a daily basis is, for me, is super fun. So it's, like, I can do so many different things from, like, marketing to coding 
to like even like helping you know do the spreadsheets for our projections. So like everything I did in school and I just do in my life, it's all like in my job. So I kind of love that like multifacetedness of things and how it's like I'm almost like an entrepreneur in my job where it's like I can do so many cool things every day. So that's what I like about it. Like, and then also the other fact is that like I'm working AI. So this year especially, like everyone I talk to, they're like, have you used ChatGPT? I'm like, yes. And like Microsoft does a lot of powering of the inference and stuff like that. And they're like, okay, what's inference? I'm like, okay. <laughs> when you ask it a question and it replies you back, my team does that. And they're like, oh, that's cool. So getting that recognition is, is nice as well because like people have been joking with me for a while. It's like, yeah, man, Abe has been working this AI thing since like 2017. And we just like laughed it off. Like it's never going to get anywhere. And now they're like, oh, finally, <laughs> I can talk to you. I see what it is. So that recognition is kind of cool as well. So all in all, I like, like all the different aspects of things, um, the multifacetedness, as well as like the cool AI recognition I'm getting now from friends and family. Wow, sounds really exciting. Yep, yep. Thank cool. you so much for Dude. your time. Thank really you, thank you so it. much. Thanks.